Hey now, welcome to the Dirty Side of the Track, America's leading Formula One podcast. It is 2023. Welcome to the new year, everybody. I'm Brian. That's Rob. Rob, welcome back to the States, buddy. Well, thank you very much. First of all, Happy New Year. Yes. 2023. Here Merry we go. New Year, as yeah, they would say I, in trading places. I did... Um, I did kind of. I was going to try and celebrate the new year twice. Uh, once, as it as Big Ben struck in London, then I was going to power on through and like keep going and watch New York, and that lasted for about twenty minutes. Uh, <laughs> so. I did notice you sending tweets and uh, WhatsApps well after your midnight, but then you stopped it, all of a sudden. It wasn't well after. Uh, believe me, it wasn't well after. We were done by about. We were staying over at my uh, sister and brother in law's house, and I was designated driver as well. So kind of like. Uh, Actually, yeah, I found this really nice... Uh, you will not have four, the drink? 0.4% lager, which has come on a long way since my wife was pregnant, and all of the 0% alcohol tasted like garbage. But this stuff was pretty good. Uh, actually, psychologically made me feel like I'd had a couple of beers, even though I hadn't. Um, so, yeah, it was all good. And um, great trip back home. Uh, I've got to be honest, my proudest moment was not stalling once for the 10 days that we were there. I did not stall the manual or stick shift, as they say over here, uh, car that we had as our rental once. I was nice. last time when we went back, pulling out from the rental car, uh, put it into gear. The guys watch me to make sure I'm going to leave the uh, the parking lot okay. And <laughs> no, then, right there. Yeah, yeah, double stall, oh, double stall right in front of the guy. No. Whereas today, it just cruised out. The only the bizarre thing is. I, well, I only had one moment where I almost went down the wrong, well, did go down the wrong side of the road for a short amount of time. Uh, <laughs> well, I do that, that regularly here in Chicago anyway. It's fine. That's, this is legitimate. We flew in overnight on the 23rd, so we landed on Christmas Eve morning. And uh, so I had no sleep on the plane. I was absolute toast. I drove the two and a half hours from Heathrow to Wales. Um, went, to see, went to go and kind of see the in-laws or what have you. And as I was leaving my father-in-law's house, dark little side road, not illuminated, came out to a main road. It was dead, no traffic. So I just turned right. And I literally turned straight right. I didn't go across to the other side and turn right. <laughs> just turned right and I'm driving on down the road. And then my wife's like, I don't think we're supposed to be on this side <laughs> of the road. <laughs> that so, was my one. So that was my one. You talk about stalling. I got to mention this fast. Um, you know, I love cars and speed, uh, which obviously culminates in my passion for F1, but uh, it was, my friends got me a NASCAR experience, and I convinced my wife that I was able to put some extra money on top of this already generous gift so I could get the full, you know, as much power as I give you. So I get in this NASCAR at Chicago Motor Speedway in Joliet, and I have, I'm, I was going 165 miles an hour in this thing around the track by myself with no one in the car with me. And the cool thing is, it's it's obviously it's a stick shift, and I hadn't driven stick in years. So to your point, the question is, will you stall it? And I'm sitting there, and everybody else had like family and friends, and there's people watching, and I'm first because I'm one of the few people who was stupid enough to pay for this upgrade. So I'm in the front car, they put the chip in, and I start to go down the pit lane, and I am so nervous it had been many <laughs> years and i'm like if i stall this nascar in front of everybody i'm gonna look like a boob but uh no i was able to do it now did i give it a little extra too much gas yeah totally i was, it was oh that's exactly what i did i kind of read the hell out of that thing yeah. in first gear to make sure i wasn't gonna stall but um... i was at i was like a 90s f1 car i was at eighteen thousand rpms going out of there <laughs> Well, one last driving story before yeah. we get back to actually the content of our pod uh, is that today going, we, you know, we flew in yesterday. I'm, I'm going out to go and pick up milk and all that kind of stuff this morning. I came up to a stop sign and my left foot started invol voluntarily twitching like it wanted to be part of the uh, driving <laughs> experience again. I'm like, sorry, buddy, no clutch for you anymore. It, it just it was I wasn't even in control of it. Every now and again, I'd come up to a standstill and my left foot would reach out to clutch. I'm like, there's nothing there. Sorry, well, buddy. And I guess it'd be your left hand. But when you're, for me, when my right hand starts moving like it would with to row the gears, then I'm like, I got a problem. <laughs> but, uh, anywho, anywho, anywho. Welcome back so, to the dirty side, everybody. Yes. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, 2023. Yeah. Let's just quickly close the door on the year that was 2022 in a self-indulgent look at uh, ourselves. So myself and Brian are extremely grateful that as we stand here or sit here, actually, uh, looking at our stats for last year, we've nearly accumulated seven and a half thousand uh, downloads of the show, which blows our minds. That's come from when we started back in December 21 all the way through to now. In our calendar year of 2022, we had 7,253 downloads. So, uh, and that constitutes season one, because as well as being 2023, this is episode one of season two. Just how... 
how fresher does it feel, Brian, that we're on season two? I love it. I think it's great. Um, and we, you know, we crested 500 followers on Twitter, which may not sound like a lot, but when you start from zero to in the first quarter, because we didn't even get our Twitter account going for a while, um, pretty good, pretty good stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to be part of the community, and I look forward to uh, topping and cresting those goals in 2023. So here we go. Speaking of big years in 22, uh, F1, right? I mean, it, it picked up in the U.S. as we kind of knew was happening uh, over the last years before that. The U.S. average TV audience increased 28% to over 1.21 million a race. Uh, women averaged 352,000 viewers per race, up 34% from 21 to 22. And at, as a whole in 22, we're 28% of the audience, which is amazing. And p kids as I would call them, 12 to 17, were up 49% over 21. So young people getting into the sport as well. Just an amazing thing to watch. Super exciting to see the growth of F1 in America. I know having Nate on from ESPN and talking to some of the folks at ESPN, they're super excited for what the future holds for F1 in America as well. And uh, man, just a great time to be an F1 fan, whether you're in America or anywhere around the globe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and kind of just before we move on to the next thing, I'd kind of echo like that, the young kind of profile out of not really anywhere. I don't, I don't force my eldest who's just turned 17 to watch F1. I really haven't. Um, and I haven't even forced him to make sure he downloads every episode on his uh, phone either of the podcast. But he's just kind of organically been drawn into it. It started off by, um, as one of our DRS guests recently, I now can't remember, got into it through playing video games. It might have been Josh, I think, kind of just, he was got into it through PlayStation. And then this season that just gone, my son has watched almost every single race. Um, and he talks about it to friends at school as well. So I think it really is starting to come up in that kind of uh, demographic as well, which is absolutely awesome. My, you know, my um, daughter at school talks about friends of hers who enjoy F1. And one time a friend of my daughter said, oh, Zoe's dad has a podcast about F1. And yeah, this was both embarrassing to mm. everybody and mainly embarrassing to everybody involved. But anyway. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna be on that. That's not our demographic. I can't remember I can't imagine the cool kids who are kinda of like fifteen getting into the sport are listening to us two drone on Why about F one. But uh... Why not? Oh yeah, we're down with the kids, Brian. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah, don't Talking be so about sus. being down with the kids. <laughs> What a segue this one is. Uh, Alonso is down with the kids, um, because if Alonso is old father time of F1, then George Russell is definitely uh, one of the young uns. And uh, one of my favorite pictures of the festive period uh, went out on Twitter, and everyone grabbed it, which is, it's New Year. I don't even know where it is. Maybe you've got some background on this, Brian, but it's a New Year's Eve picture, I think, of George Russell and Alonso of what can only be described as busting some moves. I mean, I saw this picture, and the first thing that, and again, I think in sounds, but the first thing that came to me was, George! I mean, I see him parting with Fernando, and then the next thing that comes to me, Fernando and Lewis don't get along at all, and George and Lewis are teammates. So is Lewis somewhere in Kathmandu or hiking somewhere and wherever, and does he see this, and is he annoyed by this? I don't I, think I George wanna... needs to get permission for to go and hang out with friends. Well, of course not. <laughs> George goes does his thing. He was very nice as well while we're talking about the new year. He ordered grapes, 12 grapes. So everyone had a grape according to his girlfriend's tradition. I don't know, whatever. But if I'm Lewis, it still pisses me off. I, I, mm, I think, you, no, I don't think if so. If I had a sworn <laughs> arch enemy... And you oh, started hanging out with them. <laughs> and you started hanging out with them. It would annoy me. So Am basically, I wrong? so you think that Fernando and Lewis are like He-Man and Skeletor? That's oh. what you've got them down as, have you? A hundred percent. You don't think this was real when What's he did? Idiot? He's an idiot. Come on, that's what heat of the think. moment stuff. It's wrong. All, uh... yeah, all right, moving on. Um, there was on a on another amazing note around the end of the year. Seb was being interviewed and I didn't catch the full context of it. Uh, Max was there, Christian Horner was there and they asked Seb about Max and it was amazing the, the, the way he answered. First of all, he was honest, right? So Seb being Seb basically said, you know, he came in, he's a very, he can be very aggressive at times going for spots that when he was younger weren't there, but now they are. And he effectively said between his talent and ability and drive, He's one of the best he's ever seen, is what he basically said to his face. And Max did a great job holding a stone face. I mean, if it were me, I would have been, you know, so I get one compliment from anybody. I turn red and kind of, you know, blush and fall over. But uh, anyway, it was really a great interview to see. And it was fun to see a, a guy with nothing left to prove and no need to be PC 
on his way out the door, effectively saying what I think we all kind of see about Max, how great and amazing he is. So kudos to Seb for being honest. It was kind of a neat, neat little interview. Yeah, it was. Um, not a lot else really came out in terms of kind of breaking news over the... I mean, everything went quiet, really, for Christmas and New Year, I think. But we did get some great news in there that uh, Crofty got engaged. Um Posted it out on his, uh, I I know his Instagram listening. and Twitter, but yeah, co- yeah, congratulations, Crofty. We know you're listening right now, so uh, well done. <laughs> yeah, kudos, 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 congratulations. And then we did get uh, the driver rankings dropped as uh, and team principal rankings dropped of the drivers. What was curious was, okay, so all the drivers ranked each other, and then the team principals ranked the drivers, and apparently one of the people who weren't able to vote was Lewis. Again, he was probably off hiking somewhere. Um, doing his thing but it was the drivers ranked max first in 2022 charles second a tie for third with lewis and george if he'd voted he would have been third alone Uh, okay Um, you think he would have voted for himself once again do you not know how people work (laughs) i don't understand what's happening here the new year's come and gone and rob is, is broken fifth was lando and i love that i love that he sneaks into the top six um you know it's a bit disappointed he wasn't seventh (laughs) <laughs> well, he finished seventh so many times, but I love the fact that he snuck in there. And then I was thinking, all right, Carlos, as voted by the drivers, Carlos will be next. Wrong. It was Fernando. And I think we saw a lot, especially the second half of the year, maybe even the, the th- one third through to the end. Fernando really had some strong performances and the car let him down a lot. And the other drivers seemed to feel that way. Then Carlos uh, in seventh and a three-way tie to end the top 10. Uh, as voted by the drivers, was Seb, Checo, and Alex. So Alex, not to me, seems makes sense, right? I recognize he finished far lower in the points, but he really took that wheelbarrow and turned it around and did whatever he could. Ch- the big surprise to me was Carlos in seventh and Checo tying for eighth. Um, two guys who won a race but still yeah. finished that low. So that was my sort of takeaway. Anything you saw in there besides that, Rob? No, I just, I just thought that maybe... Although it doesn't quite work for Charles and Carlos as much as it does for Max and Sergio, you almost felt that those two got almost voted down for maybe not making the most of the machinery that they had at their disposal. Uh, whereas others, like you say, have kind of driven wheelbarrows uh, out, of their, yes, um, out of their skin. Alex. If wheelbarrows have skin. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> of course they do. It's 2023. So then the team principals uh, did the same vote, and Max was a clear winner. They actually used a point system on this one, but it doesn't matter. So Max, clear winner, Charles second, George third, as voted by the team principals, Lewis fourth, Checo fifth, and then once again, making it into the top six, three top teams with two drivers each, but nope, not all of the top six, Lando. I love it. This is great. <laughs> I, I actually predicted, if you remember a year ago, Lando winning a race this year. I didn't know see the McLaren having so many... Um, you know, arrow challenges. But so I'm happy to see Lando, then Carlos, Fernando, Valtteri, and Seb. So Valtteri cracks this list ahead of Alex, effectively, uh, from the other one. So it was fun fun to see those rankings and kind of close out 2022 uh, strong. Yeah, and also closing out 2022. Oh, we've kind of left a little bit of a party poop. We, we, this is, it's a, you know, it's the, the party's over. People are picking up the streamers off the floor and we're going to have to kind of go <laughs> over the Red kind of solo the, cups everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um the FIA don't really understand why um, they seem to just go like too far in one direction. So they've, they've put a new rule out now that will basically uh, prohibit anybody from making political statements at race events without getting prior permission from the FIA. Now, I kind of get the sentiment behind this. It does feel like um, maybe on some occasions the drivers have used their platform too much for their own personal thing where you look at it and think, oh, did, should you really be poking the bear like that? But it's still kind of freedom of speech. They should be able to do They should be able to use their platform for things that they want to highlight. So just, I think they could have rolled this out in a less draconian way where there was maybe some, can you reel it back a little bit or at least some two-way dialogue. But this whole, thou shalt not do anything unless you come with a, a written note from your mum uh, that says that you can do it. Um, I don't like it. I mean, so Zach Brown quickly came out and supported the statement. I don't like it at all. And I mean... I, I got to just read into it for a minute. This is purely editorial at this point, as though it isn't always. But, you know, there were two people who really spoke out the most last year, even the last two years. It was Lewis and Seb. Seb retired. So this is the second rule now that targets one driver in particular, Lewis. And like with the jewelry policy, that was Lewis. 
And I hate to say it, but eventually you got to stop making rules that target a single person. And okay, you can say this one's broader than that. I actually think, now that I'm done editorializing, I think there's a reason behind this that's pretty obvious. Money. When they're starting the races in Saudi Arabia going forward, they're going to end them as they always do it in Abu Dhabi because of money. A lot of the people who have things to say are about human rights and the rights that don't always exist in some of the Middle Eastern countries. And that's one large platform. There are many, but that's one of them. And now you can't do that. And I'm assuming the sponsors like that a lot more in those countries. So again, I feel like it's money, but it's once again, from the outside, a bad optic. You're effectively targeting one driver with it as well. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't looked at it that way. I hadn't really thought about the single driver. I just thought about the whole, uh, there's only the elder statesmen that try it. I'm sure Fernando's done something before. I, I think... We've kind of discussed this before that once um, Seb, Fernando mm, are gone, then how many kind of, they all become a little bit cookie cutter. They're all nice guys with PR managers and Instagrams that say the right thing and show them well, petting and, 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 and kissing they maintain babies. A brand. And, right, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, are they just trying to make sure that nothing, they're just trying to keep the brand under control, it feels like. And while I kind of get that, if doesn't feel like it needed to be something that was published out into the public forum that we all knew about it felt like that could be like a i don't know a team and drivers uh postseason debrief to kind of go right next year we're gonna we're gonna pull this in a little bit you're still gonna be able to do this that and the other but actually want to kind of cap you doing this this and this and then they could have had a dialogue on it they could have agreed on it but that's far too logical and common sense so no they just slam the door shut and say none of you should do any of this stuff so i agreed and i know yeah. they can do it outside the race but whatever off of that one on a, on a, I, I'm going to make it a positive note. There's a rumor circulating over the last 24 hours that China's trying to get back on the calendar. That would be exciting. I would love to see it. Um, as a fan, more race is always better. I know we've talked with Paul, Pit Lane Paul, and it's not always great going to so many places. Um, I don't know if it'd go back into the original slot, and unfortunately it was the relaxation of the zero COVID rule, which is causing havoc across China. And if anyone's listening in China, all our best to you. Um, as you deal with uh, the virus, but it's just one of those things I'd love to see the race happen, and I'd love for it to be something that's a positive uh, for people in China who are F1 fans, and, and uh, everyone around the world would get a chance to watch it. So to me, I'm I'm looking at it glass half full, even though it comes on the back of you know struggles for people. Yeah, no, agree, agree, and I think it would make sense to put it back in the the slot that it had come out of because otherwise you've got to rejig the whole calendar right. to find a home for it. B the um, the other options to take its place while we're all kind of clamoring for, you know, Portugal, South Africa, whatever people are going for, uh, Malaysia, it all added logistical headaches to where it was in the calendar of kind of like, hey, you're over on that side of the world, then let's fly over to Portugal, let's go back again. So slotting China in there, I think, makes sense. I have to keep an eye on it and see what happens. In term, in, blah, 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 blah. In, uh, <laughs> that's a good old jet lag kicking in there. Um, in terms of talking about keeping our eye on things, we need to keep our eye on the good old car reveal bingo card. These aren't these um, far away. This well, is I what's know, so great. I know that's what's so really cool I hope about it gets this. Everybody is excited. That we we got three dates locked and loaded at the moment, but only two locations. So uh, what we know right now, if we do this in chronological order, is that Alpha Tauri at the moment will be first out of the gate on February the eleventh uh, in NYC to unveil their twenty twenty three car. New York Fashion um, Week is where they're doing it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I might have to see if I can get down there. Anyway. Uh, yes, next... you are very fashionable. I am. I really am. <laughs> um, <laughs> next up is Aston Martin, Silverstone, uh, February the 13th. Um, they're going to have to go some to beat the look of the car from last year. Um, but I, I doubt they're worried too much about looks this year. They need to get a bit better performance on that one. And then I'm going to steal this from a meme that I saw. But some people on February the 14th, are going to be thinking about romancing uh, their other halves. Um, I'm going to be thinking about maybe falling in love all over again with the latest Ferrari. Uh, <laughs> February the 14th, Valentine's Day. Ferrari are going to unveil their red sweetheart. We don't know where yet. It still says location TBC. But those are our three that we've got. 11th, 13th, and 14th of February, Alpha, Ferrari, and Aston. So, or, I'm sorry, Alpha, Aston, and Ferrari. I also saw a note, and I don't think this was confirmed, it probably will be in the next day, is my guess, that we're looking at February 24th or 25th for Drive to Survive to drop, which should be an amazing season of it, I would assume. 
Hopefully yeah. they don't overdo the dramatic aspects and maybe make up a little bit like they did in. Come on, I'm I'm almost thinking now it would just be funnier if they carried on and went even further than they went in last season, which is more dramatic music, more uh, kind of cutaway camera angles, more meshing up clips from races that didn't happen in the race that they're talking <laughs> team, about, team just so they can so just so they can do the drama, just just basically almost embrace it as kind of like fan fiction. Let's just right just go all in on it now. I think. But I we'll think see. they're gonna be like they're gonna cut to Max, and it'll be when he didn't let Checo through, and they'll play a Kimmy clip like this. Just leave me alone. I know what to do. And Max Verstappen was very mad. Um, <laughs> that, that could be you know, not that we have the technology to do it but the alternative uh, drive to survive by dirty side of the track would be <laughs> basically bad lip reading which is one of the videos we're about to look at here as we talk about it so there were a boatload of videos I'll just hit a few we've been off for a week so two weeks worth a lot of end of season videos as well um, but I, the first one I need a one week dispensation it came out one week before our last podcast I didn't catch it <sighs> But the I do search, and my filters caught it eventually. I got a lot of love for the Hilton Honors channel, channel Lando Norris videos. Be, Those be on me, be on me giving you love for Hilton Honors. You got a lot. Let, let's, yeah, let's I was. Catch. Yes, I was uh, out in the street. Someone pulled me over and said, "Did you catch the Hilton Honors thing on the podcast? That was great." And so uh, Marriott Bonvoy, not to be outdone has a relationship with Lewis Hamilton, and there is a, and Bonvoy is like their rewards program. So the Marriott Bonvoy, good travel talk with Lewis Hamilton on the Bonvoy channel. It's three minutes long. It's actually really good. Um, whether you like Lewis on the track or hate him on the track, it was a fascinating set of questions about how he travels and what his travel goals are. So uh, we'll put that in the links. Check it out. It is good. And while we're on Lewis, Mercedes just dropped a couple days ago, a seven-minute Lewis reacts to fan comments. I watched a few minutes of it. It was nice. I mean, but it's just Lewis answering questions from fans or, or quite honestly, some of them are just comments and he reacts to. So it's not the greatest. If you're a Lewis fan, check it out. It's worthwhile. Um, there were a lot of end of season ones that didn't live up to my hype, my hype expectation. And I don't know why. Like, no, I saw this first one you're about to talk about so now. Then, yeah, oh. like they did the 2022 F1 drivers and team principals. Hilarious. Studio Outtakes is the name. So, it's on so the just F1 before channel. you go into this one, yeah, when cool, you go. anybody wanted... titles something, hilarious Studio Outtakes, you're like, oh, this is either going to be absolute comedy gold because something <laughs> happened be. and everybody said, yeah, keep that for the outtakes, or... They needed to do an outtake thing, so they trawled all the things they clipped out and tried to make something that was painfully unfunny go under the banner of hilarious. And yeah, this was not funny. It <laughs> not was not time. good. And you know what? There was like a disjointed feel to a lot of these. So F1 then had the best cool down room moments of 2022. It was okay to watch. It brought back a lot of memories. The problem is, and this is my own take, Rob, tell me if you agree. The cool down room is gold. It is one of my favorite parts at the end of a race because it's it's drivers talking about the race without a without being prompted it's three drivers who are cooling off recapping stuff they see I almost swore stuff they see on the screens behind them chatting about the race and it's topical and timely watching a recap of those from 8 months ago in a race you don't remember what happened when they're talking about oh did you cut you off at turn 2 who I don't know. And so, like, to me, I didn't enjoy the cool-down room as much. I love the cool-down room. Don't get me wrong. It is one of my favorite things. But watching cool-down room highlights from eight months later that aren't, you know, Lewis and uh, Nico throwing a hat at each other, it's, if it's not that, I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I, I haven't seen it, but it, it's not something that translates, I don't think, to end-of-season review material. So skip it. We're basically at the Bonvoy channel only at this point. Um Best of McLaren Unboxed 2022 on the McLaren channel. If you're a Danny Rick or Lando fan, check it out. Otherwise, you can save the five minutes. So again, another one to skip. But I do have a, a couple winners coming up. Pierre Gasly and Yuki Tsunoda's Italian Christmas on the Scuderia Alpha Tauri channel. Please watch it. Please go. Take the 12 minutes. Please check it out. It's really good. And I will forever miss hashtag pukey. This, this <laughs> group of guys, these two guys, really have fun together. I, I'm going to miss them working together. They do a twister bit. You don't want to miss it, what Yuki says. Um, anyway, ch check it out for sure. I, and I, I got a, I got a, oh, Brian, you got my hopes up. I should have read your review. I just saw who this was. I saw it was bad lip reading. And because I love 
everything and I thought it was the official I'm not sure if it was the official bad lip reading lot or not but I saw this link that you put in there I followed it through to YouTube and I lost a minute of my life that I'm never getting back right? again so it's the McLaren racing bad lip reading and you would anticipate it would be funny it wasn't I love the Super Bowl ones they do I love like my son despite the fact it's like not uh, really their age range anymore my two boys love watching the bad <laughs> bad lip reading of uh high school musical because it's absolutely <laughs> hilarious um this but so hope, everything, they, everything that's ever been done is such a good idea and this sucked so just just move on so we're basically at bonvoy and alpha towery i'm gonna add one more uh from the shell channel last episode i got us to the golf channel well g-u-l-f not g-o-l-f um so the shell channel it is Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz making gingerbreads for the Shell Track Lab team. It is good. Check it out. It was, again, 12 minutes. A little slow at times, but definitely worth the watch. Um, and then we're going to close out with one last strong one that I want to highlight. is F1 Grid does Secret Santa 2022. I loved this over the years. They've done it the last three or so years. I, I, I've, it's fantastic. you got to check it out. It's 13 minutes on the F1 channel. Um, they did uh, Funniest Moments of F122. You can uh, skip it. Um, it's only five minutes. The context means a lot, but I wouldn't get the family around the iPad with the popcorn and the Snuggies on that one. Um, I would just stick to the three we highlighted. And I don't have links for these because there were a bunch that came out at the end of the year, and this is Rob's favorite. Lollipop Man. Rob, do you want to highlight anything from those? 12, 12 Days of Christmas is is absolutely superb. Um, we actually were half thinking of trying to do our own kind of 12 days of Christmas and maybe get our friend Andy to kind of, uh, make a jingle out of it. We never made it. I'm glad we didn't because it wouldn't even held a candle to this, uh, piece of art because it was, it was brilliant. You've got to watch it. You've got to watch it to the end when you think they get to the end and they get back to one, keep watching because they add a zero <laughs> to their 12 days of Christmas, which is even better than the 12 days that actually go alongside it. Um, just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And Jingle Bells as well. Uh, they just... Basically, just go and sub. We're not even like we have no affiliation with them, but don't really, just just go subscribe to Lollipop Man, and you won't. I I don't yet think they've really done a duffer. Yes, there was one I remember in the season that I wasn't massively uh, a fan of, but that's only because it wasn't as brilliant as the rest of them. It's still brilliant, just not as brilliant. So I, still go I don't back think and they ever miss the a beat. From, these guys, they don't. I go back and watch the Saudi Arabia one where Max would pull it up with the safety car next to Charles, and he's singing Max, 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 super. <laughs> I just like it makes me laugh every time. Anyway, all right. Well, so, so yeah, please. yeah. I mean that that's that's news and social slim pickings, but a lot of videos. Uh, thanks, Brian, for doing what you do best and trawling the uh, the underbelly of uh, videos of F one. Marriott um, Bonvoy in the golf. Marriott Bonvoy. I mean, in the this Shell is, Channel. Shell Channel is. This is yeah. You are really going. Uh, I was going to say above and beyond. You might be going below and beyond, but um, yeah, I'm just there for you. So really, that was kind of it. We've uh, we've not got anything. We haven't got a guest to kick off 2023. So we were kind of scratching around and thinking, what can we do that'd be a little bit of fun that we've never done before um, to kind of kick off our our new year? So we came up with the what we thought was a good idea. We'll find out in probably uh, 200 seconds uh, if it was a good idea or not, which is Brian and I are going to 100 seconds of DRS each other. So we have a double DRS detection zone here. Um, would you like to go first, Brian? Sure. Okay, that means I'm going to have to get my... Uh, I'm going to have to time and ask the questions, which this could cause some kind of issue, but we shall see. <clears throat> Are you ready, Brian? I am ready, Rob. Okay, here we go. I'll go to the countdown as well, as well as start the timer. you got to okay. do everything. It's hard. i do everything. Three well, yeah, things. you're going to have to do it back to me in a second. So, okay, oh, here we go. You're going to set the bar real low. Yeah, I, I'll try. <laughs> right, okay. In three, <laughs> two, one, Go. First post you had on your bedroom wall. Lamborghini Countach, with the wing which made it worse. Favorite Formula One track? Spa. What's your favorite cheese? A pepper jack. Best racing movie of all time? Uh, this may be controversial because it's not open wheel, but it's Days of Thunder. Ooh, ouch. Uh, <laughs> is it pronounced GIF or GIF? Come on. It's GIF, 100%. Yes, of course it is. We knew that one. Yeah. Uh, and the other one that you're always interested in is a, is a hot dog a sandwich. So no, it's not. I'm sorry. It, you can make the definition so that it works, but it isn't. Uh, if you were in the pit crew, which tie would you change? Uh, the fourth one that never shows up on Carlos's car. <laughs> Favorite musician or musical group? Dr. Dre. First memory of F1? Oh man, the video game. And I was always Rubens. And uh, just that's what really got me into F1 as a, as a sporting class. Uh, do you have any lucky superstitions? 
I, I thought about this. I only have one anymore, and it's uh, I wear a particular sport coat on very important events. <laughs> a particular one. Best F1 driver of all time. Uh, Senna. Tires, interesting or not? So everyone wants me to say yes. The answer is actually no. What the strategy they cause oh, is God. incredibly it's fascinating. To be yes, no. Okay. <laughs> is it Nutella or Nutella? Well, we know the answer to that. You're wrong. It's Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> wet or dry race? Uh, wet quality dry race. Favorite non F1 sport? Uh, college basketball or NFL? Uh, which two drivers from different eras would you love to see race head to head? Senna and Hamilton. And finally, uh, would you rather be chased by one horse-sized duck or ten duck-sized horses? Yeah, the little ones. Give me ten of the little guys. <laughs> That's time. Woo! <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta, I gotta explain the sport coat thing. It's not like it's just, it, it's a very s- sentimental. I wore it to a very important family event, and I've worn it to another very important family event, and so it means a lot to me. I remember those family events. It's not really a lucky charm per se. It just brings me a smile. Has it ever actually translated into bringing you any sporting team that you follow? Oh, I don't wear of... a sport coat to sports. Well, oh, I was just kind of worried. Is this like your Packers coat that you no, also have to wear? <laughs> no, I got. I don't actually. Don't, I used to have a lot of those. I don't have any of that anymore. As I've gotten older, I've lost most of my sort of superstitions, if you will. Because it, it turns out, as you get older and the superstition doesn't always work, you stop doing it. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I used to wear a particular jersey. Oh, they always win. Well, then they lose, so I stop wearing it anyway. Rob, are you ready, sir, for the 100 seconds of DRS? Yes, and, and are you going to count me in slowly so it aligns with the music when we put the bed underneath it? Oh, God, now i got to count at a certain cadence. <laughs> i got to do the counting, the timing, the questions. Should I do this on one leg? Um, all right, we are getting ready. Are you ready, Robert? Uh, yes, I am, Brian. Thank you. All right, we shall start in three, two, one, begin. Um, is there a film you haven't watched that shocks people when you tell them this? Uh, no, it's not a film, but it's a TV show, Sopranos. Oh, God. Um, what would you give winners instead of champagne? Um, IPA. Favorite, I think I know the answer, favorite non-F1 sport team? Arsenal. Uh, what two drivers from different eras would you like to see race head-to-head? I like that question. Mansell and Button. Really? Um, what is your favorite food? Uh, buffalo chicken. Really? Rolling starts or standing starts? Uh, standing starts. Of course. Wet or dry race? Uh, wet. Least favorite errand to run? Oh, cleaning. All oh, right. Uh, tires, interesting or not? Not. Uh, DRS, good or bad? Mm, evil necessity. Uh, okay. Favorite livery of all time? Uh, the Lotus uh, uh, John Player Special yes, Black one with 70s, gold 72, yeah. 75 somewhere in there agreed I was one of my favorite as well sorry coffee or tea coffee sleep in or up early uh, up early do you have any lucky superstitions yes I always put my left football boot on before my right really mm. cats or dogs dogs is a hot dog a sandwich to you no uh, gif or jif gif favorite restaurant Ooh, favorite restaurant. That was the question. Uh, there, was, there was a local pub uh, back home. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. I have to skip that. Can't remember the name of my local pub. And we're out of time. I had like oh. four good F1 questions to close, but you decided to just repeat the question and then say local pub on me. Yeah, I just. I don't know, it's, it, it, we used to walk up to it. I love it. It's a good Sunday roast back in, uh, back in Thatcham, just outside Reading. I now can't even remember the name of the pub. There we are. So what's what's your favorite F1 track? Just an extra, an ext- elongated session here. No one's tapping the brakes. So Brazil at one hundred percent, a hundred percent. Not even because I know you'd said at the time Spa a little. I, I always thought Spa, and then uh, to the last two years back to back, Brazil has been my favorite race of the season. And, I, and looking back on it, I'm kind of like it's Brazil. It's absolutely Brazil. Those two are the top two. Spa are in Brazil easily. First with Silverstone knocking F1, at number my, three. My last one. It's favorite memory of first memory of F1. So I was thinking about this because I thought it might come up, and I can't tell you a particular race. All I do know, because I was 13, so I was kind of getting more and more into sport, it was Nigel Mansell in his Williams in 1988. I can't tell you it was a particular race, but I know at the end of that year, um, I really, really started getting into it and... I remember following Nigel Mansell of all people. Like, look at the people that were around in that era, you know, yeah. Prost, Senna, that lot. And I picked Nigel Mansell, but um, quite a mustache. You know, <laughs> I think it was the mustache that the did mustache. it. And I really like the Williams um, 
the blue and uh, yeah. blue and yellow and all the kind of what do you call them over here slot car racing stuff scale electrics as we have in the uk it was always williams was one of the cars on there me and my brother used to fight over who had the williams i don't nice. even remember what the other one was well i got into it through video games much like you're saying people did that's how i got in f1 in particular i always loved cars countage first poster um it, the best driving movie of all time not racing movie but driving movie in my mind is ronin with robert de niro uh, jean reno and some other folks that is such a good movie if you've never seen you never seen I it? See, no one has, no, I have, but no oh. one has ever, ever actually mentioned the best racing movie of all time. Uh, all the times you've asked this question, no one's racing? ever actually answered the correct, uh, or driving racing, whatever you want to call it. Well, there's a the, difference, but, uh, but are just, you about to say driven? Because that's no, the correct answer. <laughs> no, people have said driven and they're wrong as well. Nobody yet has said Cannonball Run. And that is the best racing movie of all time. Are, are you serious? <laughs> oh, come on. Cannibal Run's amazing. It's like the real live action version of, uh, what was it, Wacky Races. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's just brilliant. Have you gone back to do a rewatch? Because I'm going to bet it doesn't stand up the test of time. It does. It does as long as you watch it through a cheesy lens. You know, it's the same as like Smokey and the Bandit and uh, all the police that lose the ability to drive as soon as the Bandit goes past and they all crash into each other and then get out looking vexed. Yeah. Agreed. Anyway, we kind of meandered off here. That was actually yeah. kind of good fun. I enjoyed doing that. Yeah. Well, um, we should, it's a good thing that it works because we've been doing it to like 30 people so far. It's finally we take a taste of our own medicine. That, that is true. Your mind does go blank a little bit, despite the fact that I've all the, every time I ask these questions in my brain, I'm kind of thinking, what would I answer here? So I thought I was going to be completely locked and loaded. Um, that favorite yeah. restaurant one just completely yeah. threw me. 25 for six. seconds and I can, and of you repeating the question. It was not 25 <laughs> seconds. It was like the last five seconds you asked 45 me that one. seconds. It was not. It wasn't. done an entire lap of bar oh, I see. Short. We're starting 20, 23, 2023 bickering already. <laughs> yep. No doubt. <laughs> um, okay, so... Please come on and uh, volunteer to be the first real DRSer of 2023. We'd really love to kind of up the number that we had on last year. Um, we're actually quite open to people coming back on that have already been on. We've got no problem with that. But we'd really like to get some new people out uh, up on the DRS Hall of Fame. So uh, follow if you follow us on Twitter, and if you don't, you should. Uh, you can uh, DM us on there. Uh, we've got our email, dirtysideofthetrack.com. Dirty side of the track at gmail.com. See? Yep. I can't even remember the just email address now. Dots in there. I fine. just throw some dots and ats. It'll get here. <laughs> uh, we're that famous. Uh <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening to the first episode of 2023. It is going to be a great year, not just for F1, not just to be part of the dirty side, but for all of us. I'm being positive. Let's share that positivity into the world and tune in next week when we figure out what we'll be doing then. We do have some great ideas before testing starts. Uh, we just got to figure out when those will happen. So stay tuned. Yeah, we got some we got some interesting stuff going on with our Discord community. So if you're not on there, please join it. The link's in the show notes. Um, I also need to give a shout out to uh, one of the DRS uh, folk that we had on, my good friend Az. Uh, I was able to catch up with him uh, in real life and have a beer back in the UK. So it was nice to catch up. I'm not saying that if you come on the 100 Seconds of DRS, I'm going to fly around the world and buy you a beer. But, you know, who knows? Um, yeah, we got some guests lined up. We're not quite sure when they're going to slot in. Um, but, uh, yeah. Great way to start 2023. Looking forward to more car reveals coming through. Looking forward to the momentum building up towards testing before we then all start going completely insane and looking forward to the first race. So um, thanks for tuning in. And uh, let's see what next week brings, Brian. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs>